Hello whiskey lovers, Ben here bringing you another whiskey review. Now following on from the Brookladdy distillery tour video that I put up, I've been exploring a bunch of their whiskies, Brookladdy's and Port Charlotte's. And this one is one that I picked up whilst visiting the distillery. Now this is an eight year old version of the Classic Laddie. And I tried the Classic Laddie a few times before. Um, I enjoyed it, but it hadn't quite wowed me. So I was interested to give this one a try and see if after spending some time with the bottle, it would open up to me and see if I was missing out on anything. So this is quite a nice little box set. Comes with the whiskey, of course, but also these glasses. And these are the glasses that they let us use at the distillery. They're kind of an unusual design. They were interesting to me. I think for me, they let too much of the aroma escape, um, but I'm always open to exploring. So it was, it was a point of interest to have a different type of glass. Now, of course, the presentation, the packaging deserves a mention. It's something Brook Laddie are very good at. They make quite distinctive uh, bottles, labels, and packaging, whether that's the metal tins or presentation boxes. But something that I've also noticed, which they should be applauded for, is on their recent packaging, they're giving a lot of detailed information. It's really quite nice to see. Some blurb worth taking note of on the box here. The aim of the Laddie 8 was to preserve the elegant floral notes of the vibrant young spirit whilst building up the signature salty citrus tang characteristics of Brook Laddie and um, the unusually high strength of 50%. Laddie 8 opens up with a drop of water revealing soft root notes, yada, yada, yada. So they actually recommend, although it starts at 50%, explore it with some water, which is worth taking note of. Then if we move on to take a look at the bottle, we've got an age statement of eight years, unpeated, Isle of Single Malt, distilled, matured, bottled, unchill filtered and colouring free at Brookladdy Distillery on Isla. So they're, they're kind of doing the full gamut there. It's a very clean bottle, nice neat presentation. Really stands out on a shelf as well. So let's get it poured. And at first I will be doing it without water, but then we'll try adding a bit. So going in and taking a look at the colour here, it's about a shade of five white burgundy. A nice clean crisp gold. Natural of course it'd be in Brookladdy. The nose opens quite soft, it's got a malty green tone and there's some light uplifting vinous notes in there. A little bit of green grape, that kind of thing. It's quite a buttery nose, thick aromas and there's kind of an umami note to it, it's very um, fulfilling. Surprisingly for a 50% ABV, there is very little prickle or heat to it. It's, it's quite a pleasant nose. If you really dig into it, you, you get a little bit of prickle in there, but you start to uncover some dry hay, some resinous wood notes, and a little bit fruity as well, some stone fruits, peaches. Let's move on to the palate. It kind of carries through quite similar initially from the nose. It opens soft and light, but then this woody pepper starts to grow and it gets a bit warming, a bit prickly. Those woody tones are possibly a little bit too forward, a little bit overwhelming. There is some wood sap, some hay. Again, it's a little bit green, soft organic tones. And I think there's a, a subtle citrus dancing around in the background, maybe more of those stone fruits as well, but it's all being smothered by that, that heat, that um, wood. It's got a very pleasant oily mouthfeel though, it's quite nice and thick. And as you sit with it, this kind of minerality, this coastal tang is, is building, it's um, helping to draw out some of the citrus as well. Now as for the finish, it's very warming and full. There is a bit of a prickle, a bit of a heat, but it's not taking it too far, it's not overwhelming. Again, there's lots of that dry woodiness to it. There's still those peppery notes and the organic tannins return. And I think hidden away between, behind the heat, you can still pick up that uh, coastal tang, it's still evident. But it's primarily that wood, warming and medium length. So on the surface of it, I kind of feel that this is a little bit imbalanced. I've rated it an 82 out of 100. The nose offers a load of delicacies and um, a nice body behind that. But then when you progress onto the palate, that wood and the peppery heat, it really kind of throws those off and hides all of the delicacies that you were exploring in the aroma. 
But if you're prepared to sit with it and work with it, you can still find those delicacies, you can still explore, um, and it's, it's very enjoyable if you do. It's just not an easy drinker. But of course, that is drinking it neat without adding any water. So let's see how that changes things. So I've already done my homework. I've tried it with varying amounts of water and come up with what I consider to be the optimal amount, which is roughly about 5%. Give that a minute to sit and really settle. Now, as you'd expect with 5% water added, the color hasn't really changed at all. Now the nose has become a bit more malty and whole grain. There is a touch more um, of a prickle to it on the nose, which is interesting than drinking it neat. But what you pick up on now is a wealth more sweetness there was something that it took me a while, I was sitting with it and I was exploring, I couldn't quite put my finger on it and the best I can come up with is like a vanilla mousse. It's really soft, almost fluffy if that makes sense. There's vanilla, it's a little bit earthy, almost nuttiness. More of that citrus coming through, it's quite a pithy citrus um, and the fruits, almost a peach syrup. Lemongrass and more of those organic tannins. You might also be able to pick up on a little bit of that coastal note there, hidden way in the background. Very pleasant nose, very pleasant indeed. Let's move on to the palette. It's just much calmer, it's much more accessible, and I wouldn't say friendly, but it's not coming for you, there is no fight there. It sits quite nicely on the tongue. You get much more of that hay and lemongrass, um, still nice organic tannins, pithy citrus, but there's a, a nice sweetness to it as well. There's a mellow dry wood and a little bit of warmth. It's kind of ground spices bringing that warmth. Minerality, a little bit oily. That, that sweetness is quite hidden, it's, it's in the background. But it's no longer that fruity really, it's more like um, sugar, malt malty sugar and kind of the vanilla part, a little bit earthy again. It's very wholesome, very authentic. And that palette really, it doesn't transition, it just carries on through into the finish really nicely. You've got a little bit of that warmth coming from the dry woods. Again, it's kind of ground spices. There's a touch of that minerality lingering on, the coastal tone. And those dry woods and the rounded organic tannins. It's got a, a medium length and a little bit warm. So with the water, I feel it opens really quite nicely. I've rated it an 84 out of 100, which is an incremental improvement. It's not massive, but it is getting that little bit more from the whiskey in my opinion. It's just, it's a bit more balanced. It carries through nicely. The nose is possibly, it loses something, but it, it gains in the palate and the finish. Instead, it just becomes more enjoyable. Kind of makes you wonder why they bottled it 50% rather than 49-ish because I, I'm worried that you know people sip this at 50 and they'll struggle to get past that heat, the wood, the pepper and really appreciate it because it's got a lot to offer if you do take it down just a notch. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this whiskey review. If you have, please chuck a like and a comment below and consider subscribing for more whiskey content. Cheers. And I've just realized that for like the whole of that video, this bottle's been covering up the patron's wall. <laughs>